This is your world So let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed This morning I'm going to talk to you about how grace teaches humility. Grace teaches humility. And I want to start off uh, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and beginning at verse 5, he says, um, in the same way you younger men must, must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you serve each other in humility. For God op opposes the proud, but favors the humble. So humble yourself. So God can favor you is what he's saying. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Now, let's read this out of the King James and then back to the NLT. I want to make a point here. I don't want us to miss this point. He says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. The key word there is submit. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Key word there is subjection, be subject. And be clothed with humility. We got to unpack that because there's fruit from doing this. Be clothed with humility. Church folks, be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud. So be, pride, arrogance, boastfulness is in opposition to humility. That if you're not operating and if you're not clothed with humility, most likely you're going to have pride and arrogance and boastfulness somewhere. So he says, be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud. Why should I be clothed with humility? Because God resisteth the proud. Think of that, with, withholding and, and fighting against the proud. But what does he do with those who are clothed with humility? He gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So now, I got to, I got to, I got to resolve this issue. I've got to make sure I know what it means to be clothed with humility. I got to make sure I know what it means to be humble because he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Next verse. He said, all right, so since he gives grace to the humble, humble yourselves. That's interesting. He's not going to do it. Humble yourselves. How? Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, why should I humble myself? Why, what's the motivation for me humbling myself? Here it is, that he, that he may exalt you, that he may exalt you in due time. He wants to exalt you. Think of that, child of God. God wants to exalt you. And he says, I can't exalt you until you humble yourself. If you will humble yourself, I will exalt you. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever just wondered why it seems like you're stuck? And you're doing all of the Christian, Christian, church, church stuff? Well, maybe you're doing all the Christian, Christian, church, church stuff, but it's not in humility. And I know it's not in humility because you're doing it. <laughs> humble yourself because he gives grace to the humble and because he will exalt you when, he says, in due time. There's a due season and a due time for everything that God wants to do in your life. And knowing that means that it's not if he's going to exalt you, 
But what? When? He's going to exalt you. But one thing we are sure of, he cannot exalt you if you don't humble yourself. So all of a sudden, this is a huge, big thing. This is huge. He said, um, so humble, in, in, in NLT, so humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and at the right time, at the right time, I don't know when the right time is for, for me to be exalted. I don't know what the right time is for you to be exalted. That's why you got to humble yourself under him. And in the right time, he will lift you up in honor. I am going to say it because I believe you're going to do it. I declare that God is going to lift you up in honor. Now, you already know, all right, Pastor, thank God that you declared that, but now I know that I've got to clothe myself in humility in order for God to lift me up in honor. So don't get surprised. Don't get surprised, world changers. This series is positioning you to be exalted. This series is positioning you to be lifted up in honor. Y'all going to be looking around. Y'all going to have to have tea and crumpets again in order to have enough time to talk about what the Lord has done lately. What has God been doing with you all? God, you got time for some tea? The thing about it is you won't be bragging on yourself. You will be bragging on him because you're talking about him lifting you up because you humbled yourself and he exalted you. So this is not a time for y'all to get together and boast about what you did, but it's a time to get together to boast on Jesus. Oh, look at what Jesus did now. Honey, what did I tell you about the Lord? Oh, look at what my God did. I can't take no credit for it, but I'm going to give all the credit to the one that did it. Get ready, world changer. You're about to be lifted up in honor. Why? 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 You know this now. You know, this ain't, that ain't just going to happen. If, if things have been prophesied over your life and it didn't happen, it wasn't because God wasn't interested in doing it. Maybe you were in pride and he resisted the proud. So now we got to focus on humility. Lord, what is this? Lord, what is this? Help me to unpack this in my life. Show me what I need to do. So die. let's get started. All right, now, the whole series from the beginning of the year has been about total dependence on God. It's, it's been about let's get the attitude of depending on God. Let's declare total dependence upon God. Why? Because dependence upon God produces humility. Dependence upon God produces humility. Ah, some synonyms for dependence upon God. Uh, relying upon God. Leaning upon God. It's like when you call somebody to pick you up from church, you don't have your license, you can't drive for some reason or another, and there's no one else available and you are dependent on that ride. You are relying upon that ride. You are leaning upon that ride. You don't see any other way you can get to your destination, so you're leaning and depending and relying upon that ride. Do you have a picture of dependence upon God? You are relying on God. Look at your life right now. Where can, you know, what area, what areas have you been relying on God? Or maybe you haven't. What areas have you been dependent on God? Or maybe you haven't. What areas are you leaning on God? Or maybe you're not. Okay, so that's going to tell us a whole lot about your position in humility. My dependence and my reliance upon God, it will put me in a position of humility. I have humbled myself to that ride, the only ride I can get that came through my dependence on that ride. I have humbled myself by relying and leaning on that. So here's first base. This is what it, God has always wanted for, for, for his creation. Depend on him. Depend on him. He wants you to depend on him. An another great synonym is trust. Depend on him, trust him, rely upon him. This is the, 
This is the base, bottom line, foundational issue uh, for every born-again Christian. It is not the doing church that uh, qualifies my Christianity. It's my dependence upon God. How often are you dependent upon God? Are you depending upon God? Are you leaning on God? That is the question you have to answer. Because if you are, you will see and locate humility. Now, pride, arrogance, boasting, these are all traits of natural man. And it springs from man's dependence upon his self. It springs from self-sufficiency. If you are not dependent upon God, and if you are dependent on yourself, if you're not leaning on God, and you're leaning on your self-sufficiency, you're not dependent on the deficiency, sufficiency, sufficiency you get from God, you're depending on self-sufficiency, then most likely we will be able to locate pride, arrogance, and boasting, because that's where it comes from. It, it, somebody says, well, I'm not going to depend on God, I'm going to depend on myself. And what you are cultivating is pride. What you are cultivating is arrogance. What you are cultivating is uh, boasting. You will eventually boast because look at what you did. You will, you will eventually brag. Look at, what, look at what you were able to accomplish. Oh, it's not a testimony about what God did because you didn't depend on God. It's a testimony about what the big I did. Look at what I did. Look at what I accomplished. And you'll give us the list, and you'll be so arrogant to get a podcast to teach other people how to be self-sufficient. <laughs> and the church said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> These traits, though not always uh, desirous, these traits, pride and arrogance and boastful, they're very persistent, and they're also evident in the lives of saved people. You think, oh, yeah, that's, that's good for people that are not saved. No. A lot of what I just said is in the lives of saved people, Christian people who come to church and say, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, God, you are good, and walk out and boast about what they have done in their own sufficiency, that they are just not dependent upon the sufficiency of God. Yes. Yes, about all about what you can do. And that's why I'm glad we declared this morning, Lord, help me not to deceive myself. This is an area that's it's so easy to deceive yourself and say, no, that's not me. And when, in fact, if you'll allow somebody else to come into your life, they might identify 20 different times throughout the day that arrogance, pride, and boastfulness showed up. It will show up if you are dependent on yourself, dependent on your self-sufficiency, and not dependent on God. Here's something I realized. There is a deep-rooted desire, and you judge, you, a lot of this is you judging yourself. I, I've, I've judged myself and still judging myself where this, this teaching is concerned. There is this deep-rooted desire to be something. There's this deep-rooted desire to be important. If not openly, yet in the heart persists a feeling of self-importance. And we don't want to deal with that. We don't want to deal with the fact that on the inside of us, I'm talking about Christians. I want to be something. There's this persisting thing that keeps knocking towards self-importance. And the world will tell you, ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it if you're depending on God to bring you there. But there's going to be a big problem if you try to get there on your own without depending on God. You only bring with you three cousins, pride, arrogance, and boastfulness.
this hunger and this desire, and that's why we're at this place. This has probably been a, a blockage to us being everything God said that we should be because we won't look at ourselves. We, I don't know why it is that church people think that it is okay for them to point their finger at somebody else. There are, there are so many things in your own life you seriously, seriously don't have time to be pointing fingers at somebody else. Your problems, you have a myriad of issues that you hadn't even accepted about yourself. You're still telling yourself they're not there. You're still telling yourself you're a nice person. And if you go do a survey, <laughs> 10 out of 10 people will say, you mean as, you know, you know, you know, you. <laughs> you don't want to deceive yourself. When you deceive yourself, there can be no progress. If you're busy telling yourself you one thing and the reality is another thing, see, you're not going to be able to do that when you see God. He know you. You can't play that trick you've been playing on everybody else with God. You can't play that false humility thing, and it's really pride. I, I love the way people do that. You know, I, I, I'm not arrogant enough. Not, I ain't bragging enough. I'm just saying. And then you continue. You, 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 now you start bragging. You, well, I don't mean to brag, and then you brag. God, help me. I want to know what this is. I don't want to be responsible for later on finding out that certain things didn't happen in my life because I put myself on the side of being resisted rather than being favored. So this is all about you. This is, this is you. I, 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 I'm, I'm, your, I'm your teacher and pastor, and you're going to have to decide as you hear this and as we go down the journey in this series, you got to decide to yourself, I is or I ain't. If you understand so far, say amen. amen. Now, this feeling of pride, of course, is out of harmony with God's program of grace. Why? For grace emphasizes the fact that everything is of God. Grace emphasizes that everything is of God. Let me show you two, two scriptures. First uh, Corinthians chapter 4 and 7 in the NLT. First Corinthians chapter 4 and 7 in NLT, and then, um, then 1 Corinthians tw uh, 1, 28, 29. All right, watch this. He says, for what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? You answer that question. What is it that you have that God hasn't given you? Isn't that amazing? Because right now, you'll sit back and you'll say, you'll say, wait a minute, uh, I got a lot of stuff that God didn't give me. See, that's the first problem. <laughs> he says, and if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? Every good thing you have is from, is from God, because all good comes from God. Amen. Amen? Amen? But somehow, you get in the middle of that and you're thinking, no. It's, I never forget my dad did this uh, where my uh, nephew was concerned when he was a little boy. And my dad, my dad didn't know, but I just, I just always refer to it because it was so funny. Ryan said, uh, somebody asked him, they said, where you get the bi bicycle from? And they was trying to teach me how to believe in God. He said, he said, Jesus gave me this bike. And my dad said, no, Jesus didn't. I got that bike. <laughs> okay, I hear what he's saying. I hear what's going on, but which they, she was trying to build a God consciousness on the inside of him to recognize that even though your granddaddy got it, then it was God's blessing that enabled him to be able to have the resources so he can get it. So ultimately, it was God that gave it to him as a gift so he can get it. But if you forget about God and then go into yourself, then there's no humility there and pride comes up. Look at this scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 28, 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28, 29. He said, God chose things despised 
by the world. Wow. God chose things that the world despised. Things counted as nothing at all. That's what God chose. And he used them to bring to nothing what the world considered important. So God says, you sit up here trying to be like the world. When God says, I can take you and your life and compare it to what the world thought was important, he says, I can bring their importance down to nothing and bring you up to something, if you will trust me. Verse 29, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Now, the Scripture's making very clear. Whether you think you're responsible for it or you'll give God the credit for it, he's making it very clear. Can't nobody boast in the presence of God? Because even what you thought you were responsible for, it was God. Amen. It was God. With your smart, intelligent self, with your five different uh, gr degrees, with the, you got so many D's behind your name, you can whistle Dixie. d d d d d d d d You can... But if, if you go all the way back, it was something about God's sustaining power that enabled you to be able to do what you did. Whether you want to give him the glory or not, you didn't have to charge him for the air that you were inhaling and exhaling as you were doing that, nor the health and the ability to comprehend, nor the intelligence that he gave you. It, it was him all over the place. It's been him all over the place. And you need to stop trying to take, take credit for what you are doing and recognize and back it up. Back it up a little bit. When you in your mama's womb, a lot of stuff could have went wrong. When you were born, a lot of stuff could have went wrong. You didn't know how broke they were because you were born, but somehow they fed you. You didn't know what happened here and there. God has been in the midst of all of your lives all of this time. You can't boast about nothing. Look, look, at, look at the car I got because I worked so hard. Well, let me tell you something. The alarm clock doesn't wake people up anymore. Amen. You better hear me, church. God wakes people up in the morning. Some people had an alarm clock to go off and they still didn't get up. You better recognize the Bible says there ain't none, no, ain't none good but God. And any goodness you've ever tasted, any goodness you've ever walked in, any goodness you've ever experienced, any great destinations you showed up at, any good raises you got, any business that worked out for you, any situation that turned out all right, you ain't got no choice but to lift your hands up to heaven and to serve a God that still sits high and looks low. You better give him the glory. You better give him the praise. You better shout unto God because it's him, it's him.